Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Ravel's latest release. This is the 132nd FA18F or the Foxtrot version of the Super Hornet. Okay, small disclaimer. Wasn't a fan of the Echo type, the, the, the sort of single seater. I did a small sort of live review of it, but there was no proper review of it done because I wasn't impressed, I'll be honest with you. The trouble that I found with it was, was that at the back here, uh, the, the pool table, as we call it, was far too flat uh, behind the cockpit. It was just didn't look right from any angle you looked at it. The great thing is though, is that obviously this being the two seater version means that the cockpit goes a lot further back and it sort of gets rid of that small problem of having a giant pool table uh, situated behind the cockpit. So I'm hopeful that this kit will actually be not too bad. So again, with this particular one, you've got a couple of options out there obviously trumpeter did one trouble with the trumpeter one now it's a very long in the tooth it's sort of 10 years old that kit now um, so obviously all the sort of details and the various bits and pieces onto it are the very early ones they did do a growler version which was the last one they did which had some updated parts but definitely if you're doing the f version uh, the fighter version from it then uh, yeah it, it's not brilliant uh, it's got a few little sort of schoolboy errors onto this one and also it looks a little bit more like the prototype version than perhaps now there is upgrades for it like everything but this is the first time we've seen a sort of modern version uh, of the actual kit come along so anyway being Ravel we thought it'd be interesting to have a look to see what we got so let's jump in so as you can see really nice black lines markings on the front here see I can't get any of this in camera because it's way too big some of the uh, details down there you can see it's 57 centimeters long which is amazing because that's exactly the same length as my cutting mat and uh, it's 41 uh, centimeter wingspan but again I'm sure you can fold that up it's got 257 parts so it's not a massively heavy parts count some of the details around on the box you can see it looks really nice uh, to be honest with you some uh, nice bits and pieces down in there as we can see uh, kit number for this one is 03847 yeah, we've got some of the other bits down in there as you can see lots of sprues and the color call outs which nobody takes any notice of so on the box as you can see it is still sealed have not been in here haven't looked even though i've been sitting on this kit for a little while now I'll keep that from the media and in the box we are greeted by we get that stand up it does a huge amount of plastic so we've got the player parts in jumbo bag hopefully it's all right uh, and then down in here we've got multiples of so again it's 30 second scale it's going to be big it's going to be cumbersome uh, but hopefully we've got some nice details in amongst all this as well so there we go we've got one screw down in there that's a nice one gives you an idea of the actual areas i don't like the idea of this with them they're rattling around in here because all you're doing is scratching up the plastic we keep that one separate and we'll probably look at that one first we've got this is probably some of the areas for the uh, for this particular version for doing the two seater because we've got an extra sprue down in here and some of these as well so that's obviously denoting that as you can see full length intakes and trunking as well so very nice it literally doesn't fit in the bag so uh, that's quite nice again huge sprue uh, we got the top sorry this is the underside of the wings and then we've also got the fillets as I call them uh, down the sides as well we've got wing fold system down in there very nice as well we've got the underside Again, very modular being the sort of the way that the, the horn it actually is. And uh, we've got some of the various bits on there. Again, this I think is a match pair to that other one that we've seen as well, which makes sense for being left and right because it's pylons and weapons and things. So we can see we've got that one down in there. And then we've got a nice one here, keeping it all flat. So we've got tail planes, all the details, instrument panels, doors, things like that. That all looks very nice indeed. And then obviously we've got all the paperwork. So if we chuck all that out of the way, we've got the decals, big old decal sheet. And we have got what has to be described as a huge book. There's lots of stuff in there. That's a huge, thick book. Right, so anyway, as always, we'll start in here and see how this thing actually goes together. So, Revell's normal colour callouts, which are horrible. Uh, some of the parts so they've blanked out obviously you know we've got the single seat the echo version i don't know if we're going to see the g uh see the growler in 30 seconds be nice if we did but you can see most of the parts are actually using as you can see down in here it's just a few other little bits and pieces so you can see lots down in there so anyway starting off uh, again there's uh, you know 
Okay, we're gonna start off to get this out of the way straight away, because again, I get a lot of people give me feedback on my reviews and stuff, and a lot of people love to have a go at Revell. And again, this is one of those things. I think if we can get into the mindset of this, we'll be absolutely fine. So I'm gonna say it to start with, this is Revell. It's not a AAA company, and also it's done to a price point. So you're not gonna get a Mercedes or a BMW or an Aston Martin or a Ferrari style kit out of technically a mainstream manufacturer because they just can't do it. So there's gonna be some little sacrifices. So that may be bits of flash, the odd sync mark. The accuracy is not gonna be as detailed and you're not gonna get as much detail in there purely because if this company was to try and make a kit that is 100% accurate, that has no flash, that has no sync marks and has immaculate detail, one-to-one -one replica of the real thing, you're gonna be paying a thousand pound for this kit. Because in this day and age, that's just the way it actually is. And I know there's people out that say, oh, but other companies can do it for X amount and all the rest of it, bully for them. This company cannot do that, not for the price where we want to pay it. And obviously when you're looking at these kits now, which are getting near a hundred quid, you've still got an incredible, as you can see here, amount of plastic down into it. So you do have to look at them from a price point. And I know everyone says, oh, it's a hundred quid and all the rest of it. We're not living in 1972 anymore. You know, the, the world has moved on. Prices of things have gone through the roof. Shipping costs are horrendous now and all the rest of it. So this is just the new world we live in. So don't have a go at the manufacturer for some of the shortcomings because that's just what they've had to do to bring the kit along at a certain price point. So, you know, you have to accept it. And at the end of the day, like I always say, you're a modeler. If you just want to construct something and put together a 100% accurate item, go do Lego because there's no sort of margins for error. The great thing about a modeler is you can fix all those problems. Sink marks, fill it, simple. You know, panel lines, wrong place, fill and put in the correct ones. Same with riveting, that's what you do, you're a modeler. So again, don't get down that rabbit hole off because if you did want 100% accurate, pure model which represents the thing to 100% accuracy, you're gonna be paying thousands for it, not 100 quid. Just think of it like that. Right, that's the elephant out of the room, moving on. So it tells you about removing the flashy parts, which will be on some of these little blades and veins and things like that down in here. It's also talking about removing more flash down in these areas. Again, I will give kudos to Ravel for pointing it out to tell you, you need to do it. Again, it shouldn't be there in the real world, you know, in the perfect world, shall we say, but this is the real world, so it does. So fair play, they do point it out. So anyway, we're starting down in here and we're removing some of the flashy bits just around in some of these areas and getting them all sorted. Again, we've got down in here, it looks like we've got a movable part so we don't going to get full length engines because obviously we've got the movable part for the tailplane in one part just being down in there again it's obviously a little bit of a fault with this kit and all the rest of it so it's telling you to remove half a mil's worth of plastic from these edges to get it to fit in all right so there is obviously a problem with that particular uh, part going in there okay top and bottom uh, the actual intakes and the engine systems going in there to complete this sort of central core, if you like, as it goes right the way through. Adding a couple of little parts down in here, and again, you need to open up some little bits and pieces, little bits of flash, uh, and little cutouts need to be removed as well, but it's giving you full details of exactly what to do, all right? So again, gonna be exactly the same down in here. Let's face it, at least they're telling you that there's a fault and it needs to be fixed, all right? So anyway, all of those ones going down in there, and again, if you were doing it sort of gear up you wouldn't worry about any of that anyway anyway moving down into this one adding lots of details and all of these fillets in here are going to build up for a very nice detailed wheel well and again you can pop in with a little bit of wiring and a little bit of uh, scratch building as well to add any details you'd like again moving right the way through so we've got the sides of the actual wheel wells being fitted down into this one making up this central core and then we're going to be bringing in the belly of it into this one to actually sort of uh, finish off the rear section if you like as it goes right the way through again there's lots of little alignment things and it's talking about them here to look out for so again take notice of those ones and it will save you a little bit of a headache of wondering why it doesn't fit afterwards then we've actually got those uh, sort of the fillet areas that go down the sides of the actual intakes as well so that's fitting those up from the internals uh, as you can see and then obviously it's talking about you will need to do a little bit of filler down in there which is nice okay so again popping those in exactly the same rinse and repeat for the other side again it's going to be the outer fillet as i call it going down into the intake system blocking off those and again it's going to be taking care of some of those little areas down in here but again it's got nice detailed images showing you what you'll be looking for for the alignment so there we go 
get that in, get it glued in, filled, sanded, rescribed, re riveted, whatever you need to do to get it in there. So that's all that one done, no problem at all. Lumps and bumps being fitted. We've got the chaff and flare buckets going underneath as well, getting those fitted into this one. Uh, we've got the APU, uh, little exhaust uh, being fitted onto there. We've got part of the nozzle sections being fitted down in here. And again, depending on which ones you want, open or closed on the nozzles, fitting those in. Wing pylons, obviously opening up the uh, marks for those getting those ones all in and then we got the underside part of this one going in and again a little bit of areas just to take care of remember anything's marked in red make sure you take a good look at it make sure yours is cleaned up as well again so that's ones i think these are the ecs nozzles being fitted underneath as well so that's those ones in there and then the top and lower parts bringing it all together Next up, obviously, we've got a little bit more filler work it's talking about that you're probably going to have to take care of. And then we're straight off into the front end with the actual nose wheel well and the cockpit section as that one goes in, which we'll talk about in a moment. So we've got that being fitted into here. We've got the cockpit, all the various bars, bits and pieces. We've got the seats going down into here. So we've got the ejection seats. And again, it doesn't look too bad, some of the details onto that one. And then instrument combing and then sides of the actual cockpit being fitted down into this one. And then obviously we've got the nose being fitted down down in here and then nose being fitted onto this one again you're probably gonna need some filler and various bits and pieces it is telling you about that back end being fitted onto this one so again it's a further one back than obviously we were talking about with the echo at the front so hopefully that will get a nicer curve on the back there tails talking about flash removal again being fitted down in there and we've got the rudders we've got the strobe lights being fitted onto this one and the tail bar that's being fitted in as well tail planes going in there talking about the degrees as you can see 20 degrees on the offset 73 uh, from both and then those being fitted down in here tail hook obviously depending on which version you're doing we've got the royal australian air force version in this kit as well they've got a slight modification on the bottom of theirs or you've got the standard sort of US Navy one, and then gear system. So again, lots of detail going down into the gear, lots of parts being in here. It's talking about cleanup and things as well, so make sure you have do that before you go in there. Doors being fitted onto this one, again, depending if you're doing open or closed, if you're doing them closed, you are gonna to have to make some small modifications into that one as well to get them to close up. And again, right the way through with all the gear, there's tons of it, as you can see, because it's a very detailed, quite a complicated gear system as well, but it'll be a lot of fun when it's all together. So that's done. Wheels being fitted down into this one, actuators being fitted onto it, usual bits and pieces, got the doors, got the door edges being done in the red as it's pointing out. And then obviously depending on your wing fold, if you want to be wings folded up or down, you've got the option down in there as well, just depending on each one. You could probably do it as a slip fit, I'm hoping you'll be able to do it as a, a slip fit so you can have them up or down. It's something I intend to do to mine, all right? So again, those will be fitted in there just like that. Exactly the same rinse and repeat for the other sides. Then we've got the front slats, depending if you want them up and down. And we're obviously going to have the flaps going in the back. We've got the ailerons being fitted down into this one. Talking about the nozzles. Again, uh, being put in there as well. We've got the light bars being fitted into this one. And then obviously we've got pylons and they're gonna be weaponry coming along down in here as well. So we've got refueling pods, various things down in here. We've got the Sidewinder, that's an old M, cracky. Uh, and then obviously we've got the X, which is standard fit, uh, A120s, things like that being fitted down in here. We've got JDAMs and uh, laser guided bombs, GBUs as well. We've got the sensor pods being fitted down onto here as well, right the way through. And then obviously we're back to the canopy type sections. So we've got HUDs going in there, canopy bows, things like that, as you can imagine of those, all being fitted down into the boarding ladder. So obviously it's got a ladder up and down, pitot tubes, all the various small bits being fitted into this one. Last up, the tailplanes, they're gonna be onto here. That we're gonna look at when we put this kit together because that looks like a really weak area so uh, we might try and do something to strengthen that up a little bit but that completes your model marking wise again we've got uh, the uh, black knights very famous obviously with those markings and then top and bottom views just like that and then down in here we've got the royal australian air force one as well from one squadron so you can see nice markings in the low viz down in there if you wanted to do that one and then obviously we've got all the call outs as you might imagine for the weaponry going right the way through. Okay, I know that was long-winded, and to be honest, it looks incredibly complicated. Um, having built the Trumpeter one uh, a long time ago, that was quite straightforward. That looks to be a little bit complicated, shall we say, but it's a big kit. Decal-wise, as you can see, to be honest, let's face it, Ravel normally do pretty good decals, no real problems with those ones. And if we have a quick look on the speedy section, 
you can see slight matte finish to them all but very nice good strong color we've got all the um, cockpit sort of placards and details and various things down in there we've got those Australian markings and you can see that actually doesn't look too bad at all right so starting off let's have a look down in here so Now this is going to be quite big to try and see all these parts because you can see how big this is. If you've been following along this week, you'll know that I did the 48 scale Hobby Boss uh, Growler review yesterday. So this just thing is a monster, absolute monster. But you can see the detail isn't too bad at all. I don't forget it's composite materials on these things now. It's not a million rivets. There is rivets, clearly as you can see, but not as many as you might expect. But generally it all looks quite clean. It looks quite crisp. There is obviously a little bit of flash we were talking about before. You can see it everywhere. Uh, but again, a couple of swipes with the sanding stick, you're good to go. If it's got some sink marks, a little bit of filler in there, you'll be absolutely fine. But you can probably see this trailing edge is a little bit organic, so it's going to need just a little bit of cleanup. But generally, it's got nice riveting detail. It's quite fine. It's not overly done like the Trumpeter one. So actually, it doesn't look too bad at all. On the inside, you can see we haven't got much going on down in here at all so there we go so that's that one right okay where are we going to go with this so what we do we'll just run around all the different uh areas if you like on here so you can see this is the central bar we've got obviously bits for the gear down in here we've got the arrestor hook and we've got the ladder bits in there and again it's all a little bit flashy everywhere I think with a little bit of cleanup it is. The other thing as well, the plastic is the harder type plastic. It seems to be what they're using these days, so fair enough. Okay, so if we can get into these. Okay, so again, to be honest, this is one of those things. It's big, it's lumpy, it's sometimes difficult to see it because it is big parts, but it all looks pretty nicely done. Interesting way they've done the nose. And to be honest, that nose does look a little bit weird down in here. I don't know why, it just doesn't look right. It looks, I don't know, that nose just doesn't look right at all, if I'm honest. But anyway, um, as you can see, huge, big sprue. I don't think we can even get the sprues in there that big. Let me just make the camera even wider. About as wide as we can go again so it is huge but if we zip around onto the close-up cam we can see a little bit more of the details so again lots of bits all over here it's your instrument panel cockpit tub front side uh, wheel well section that nose i don't know it just looks like its profile's wrong but again, it's very difficult to know. It just looks a little bit bulbous, if I'm honest. It doesn't look like it's a blended nose and all the rest of it. We'll see. We'll see. And then obviously we've got the doors. So obviously closed. We've got the uh, flaps, ailerons, tailplanes. We've got gear parts all in here. As you can see, it's a lump. It's a big, big lump canopy bow parts and then again we've got things for the arrestor hook down in here we've got the main uh, gear for the nose uh, off of this one with the launch bar but it looks like the launch bar is fixed only in the up position so you'd have to do a little bit of uh, mechanics on this to put it in the deployed position but hey ho uh, so yeah very good so it is split piece and again you can see on here we've got very raised gnarly bits in here so you're going to have to sand and polish these all off before you bring the two halves together uh, on this one so yes interesting okay so what we have to do is bung the parts back in there okay so then we have we have so this is the and again, they're a bit horrible. This is the ECS um, uh, vents off the top, and they're hollow. So those need to be hollowed out or perhaps aftermarketed if there's any available. So that's a little bit of a shame. We've got, obviously, the 
parts in here and as you can probably see they're beautifully sharp camera's not picking it up very well but all these are very sharp and we've got obviously the flare buckets underneath here as well so that's down the belly this is that bar that goes along but you can see how small these little tabs are you've got the entire of the tailplane weighed on those that's just not going to work so i'm going to try and uh, perhaps do something else if we put this kit together so we got that we got the side details down in here and unfortunately we've got a mold seam line running all the way along here as you can probably see so that has to be sanded out and again don't look too bad uh, all the sort of hatching uh, along here for the the hinge looks pretty good so that doesn't look too bad just gonna need a little bit of clean up on all of these clean up on aisle five so nothing on the insides they're all blank Okay, so underside, so this is that belly fillet you can see under here. You can see it's actually quite nice details into this one. As for accuracy, I'd have to get my references out to check. So this is the leading edge uh, sort of slats. So again, interesting. Just looks a little bit rough if we're honest. It looks a little bit sort of flashy and the various bits and pieces onto this one which to be honest was somewhat of the complaint with the echo so i don't know why it takes me slightly by surprise okay so down in here we've got various bits for the fillets and stuff like that you can see it's big old sprues on these so we'll try and look in here but you can see it's got nice details down in this it's just going to be a lot of surfaces to get this together so it doesn't look too bad, you can see. We've got the, obviously the areas for the uh, underside here. So down in here, hopefully it'll marry up as well. We'll actually get a situation where these holes fit with these holes. So that's actually looking too good. So that's all right. We've got the lights underside of the outer wings. Looks okay. Okay, so in here, which we can't sort of get into because the bag isn't big enough, that shows how big this is. As you can see, we've got lots of stuff going down in here. Uh, this is one of those ones that, as you say, trying to get it all in. You can see it's huge. Um, but again, if we start over here. So we've got the bulkheads, all the little fillets, uh, the various parts down in here for the wheel wells and all the stuff like that. This is what it's talking about when it was saying about removal of the flash. That's what that all is, is all these little bits in here. So it's only gonna be a whiz round with a knife and all the various things, but yeah. Looks all pretty good. Again, I think by the time you get it all cleaned up and sorted out, it'll be absolutely fine. It's just that getting it all cleaned and sorted out. But, and again, down in the actual intakes, you're not going to see these ones in here because it's too far back, so I won't worry about it. There's none in this area down the back here, so actually that's not too bad. Uh, I think we can live with that. Again, flashy, various things. These nozzles, again, it's going to be a nightmare to clean all this up. But again, taking your time. It's part of the process. Get in there, you'll be fine. Cool. Okay, so... into this talk about plastic carbon neutral this right okay so as you can see we've got the main slats for the outsides again deployed and up and all the rest of it doesn't look too bad and again you can see over here that's is that cooling system that's on the top for the ESA system um, again different version don't use that version on this one that's the whole point but you can see generally the detail is all there once you get this thing together and cleaned up get it into primer it'll be a different monster I think it won't be too bad at all it's just one of those looking at it now you're sort of looking at it going oh my god okay rear cockpit I think you can see various parts down in there again it's all a little bit flashy but a couple of swipes with the sander you'll be good to go with that uh, we've got the rear cockpit deck 
as you can see down in there it doesn't look too bad all the parts and again it's just clean up it's going to be massive amounts of clean up on this kit be one of those ones you'll spend as much time cleaning it up as you probably will do painting it and again different rear cockpits and things okay so this here i think we get a match pair of this we do so this one here we only need to look at one although we do get two of them so obviously the hobby boss one came with a nice buddy refueling pod and, and things like this this one it looks like you only actually come with two fuel tanks which is a little bit weird um, but again huge big old spruce so weapons pile on things like that down in here we've got the nozzles we've got the gear which isn't weight on wheels which is a real shame uh, so that'll be a little bit of flat spotting required down in there uh, yeah I think this, the, you know some of these parts are definitely overdone they're not the, the most accurate shall we say so um, you know like the banding down here on this sideline is all over the place that's well too much and again some of these parts down in here you've got the flame holder here for the burner looks a little bit crude uh, and the various nozzles and various bits pylons again there's not a lot of detail down in here as well for the release mechanism the rails again they're sort of lacking quite a bit of detail the seat is just to be honest awful but we'll probably do an aftermarket seat in there to be honest uh, so yeah nothing you'd get excited about that's for certain okay last up down in here we got some of the weapons so you can see we've got some of the uh, gbus uh, as well obviously we've got jdams down there as well targeting pod parts various bits in there just like that okay so okay so we've got something going on with the clear part here it's got a huge center seam but if you look at the distortion into it that's proper going to be no matter which angle you look at this you've got it down in there so that's going to take a lot of work to get rid of that that's going to be sanding that right down and then going to be polishing that back up to try and lose that center seam but that's a very very crude center seam down into there front one has got it as well which is a little bit you can see that distortion running right the way through the front so that's not nice at all and again yeah a handful shall we say because that's going to take a lot of work to polish that up into anything halfway decent because the trouble you've got with the injection molding process that goes right the way through the plastic it's not just on the surface when it's like that that's a proper yeah no not nice at all but anyway there's no way you're going to get around that without polishing it probably dipping it as well and various stuff <sighs> do you know what i have said i'm going to build this kit and it's not really often where I think, Jesus, what have I done? Because I've even got a color photo etch cockpit set for it. What this kit is actually going to need is a lot of time. It's going to need a lot of patience. It's going to need certainly an aftermarket seat. Definitely. It's probably going to do aftermarket weapons because the weapons are a little bit as well. Um, and again, things like the pipes at the back, to try and drill those out and do them. Luckily, I've got a pillar drill and all the rest of it could probably do it. But for the amount of time it's going to take, it may be looking at aftermarket options to fix some of the clear problems that are with this kit. And this is before we get it together and then suddenly realise it's the wrong shape. Because again, I'm not 100% on that nose. I haven't seen a nose look like that that stands out that looks wrong before I've even put it on the model. So again, I'm just really worried that that nose is wrong as well. So either we'd have to reprofile it or aftermarket. And I'm not even sure there's aftermarket available from this one. The problem I've got is I reviewed the Growler yesterday and it was beautiful. It's very, very hard to find a fault with that entire kit. It just looked absolutely great. It had everything you wanted straight out of the box. No problem at all. This one I'm thinking, okay. And as I was saying before, this isn't a Ferrari kit. This isn't a Mercedes kit. This isn't BMWs or whatever. And Aston Martin, this is Revell. So think of it like your sort of mediocre uh, company out there and all the rest of it. So they've done what they can at the price point to bring it out. Like I said before, I'm sure as a company, if you wanted to and pay a fortune for it, they could make this perfect. But it's done to a price point. So that's the point to it. 
But now I've put my sort of hat in the ring and said, I'm going to build this kit. I'm looking at it thinking, what the hell have I done? Because it wouldn't be my first choice to do it. But I have said it, I will stick to it and I will absolutely beat this into submission if it's the last thing I do. So keep an eye out for this particular video build that will be going up on Flory Models over the next few months because I am going to have a crack at it. It's not going to be straightforward. It's not going to be anything like I've done before on all the other kits but I'm thinking by the time perhaps we fix some of these problems we should end up with something looking pretty darn good. So watch this space. But anyway if you did want to originally I was just going to literally put a cockpit into this one just to detail it up a little bit but I'm thinking it's going to need quite a little bit more to go on this one so watch this space keep an eye on social media you can see this thing sort of come together as well because there is going to be some various parts we're going to have to see if we can find aftermarket ebits for it to fix some of the problems that this kit has actually got so there we go that is Ravel's I have to say mediocre it's not perfect by a long shot but it's not the worst kit I've ever seen out there either but I wouldn't sort of rush out and think that's what you need to do don't go out and rush out and think I'm going to go and build along with Phil with that one because I think there may be easier options out there. Personally, I think if you want to do the Hornet family, the Hobby Boss ones are the best one. Bang for buck and detail, I think they're absolutely fantastic. After that, you've got the Meng ones in 48 scale. But for 30 second scale, your only two options you've got is Trumpeter's old tall ones and old school ones. Or if you want something more modern, then obviously you're looking at the Ravel ones, but let's face it, they've got lots of problems. So all I'm going to say with this one, and I don't say it very often, is buyer beware. Know what you're going into if you're going to build this kit and going to buy this kit. It's not going to be a straightforward build, but trust me, when it does go together, you can have a real sense of achievement with it because you've had to beat this thing into submission, get it together, and you're going to end up with something looking really, really good. So don't actually just dismiss it. It should be quite a good one once you get there. Anyway, that's Ravel's 132nd FA-18F Hornet.